Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to compute the amount of work required to pump a liquid, namely water, out of a tank. Suppose we have a 10 meter tall cylindrical tank with a base diameter of 6 meters that is completely full of water. Suppose further that the outflow pipe is located at the top of the tank. And then before I read the questions, let's just begin by labeling our sketch. So we know the height of this tank is 10 meters. So I'm going to set the y-axis to start here in the middle and go vertically upwards. And then the x-axis will also cross through the base. Okay, so I have an x-axis and a y-axis. And the positive y-direction is going upwards, so I know that the top of the tank is located at y equals 10 meters. So this spot right here is 10 meters. Now, we are told that the diameter is 6 meters at the base. Well, since this is a cylinder, I know that this is also 6 meters here, so the radius is 3 meters. And now the last thing we're told is that the outflow pipe is located at the top of the tank. That means the water is coming out right at the top, so imagine there's the pump right here where the water comes out. Okay, so let's look at our questions now. How much work is required to pump the water over the top edge of the tank? And before I go on, this should say pump all of the water over the top edge of the tank. So let's start with this one. We'll call this problem A. Now there's a second question here, problem B. What if the tank is half full? So problem B, we're assuming the pipe is still at the top of the tank and we're trying to pump all of the water out, but the only difference is the tank is half full, so the water level would be about here vertically. And then question C is, what if the water was pumped to an outflow pipe located three meters above the top of a full tank? So in that case, we would move this upwards for problem C. Let me move my label here for problem B. And then for problem C, this begins here. Let's start with A. So we have a full tank. We want to pump out all the water. And the outflow is on top of the tank. So first thing we should recall that the work done in this situation can be modeled by this integral. That is, where rho is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, the density of water. G is the acceleration of gravity, so that's 9.8 meters per second per second. A of Y, this function here, is the area of a representative cross-section of our tank, so in this case a representative cross-section, sometimes I refer to these as slices because it's reminded of slicing this through. So this would be the representative cross-section and A of Y represents its area. D of Y represents the distance each individual slice or cross-section of water must travel vertically before it reaches the outflow. So already there's a couple things we can fill in right away. Again, rho is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. G is 9.8 meters per second per second. So I can replace this with 1,000 times 9.8, which is just 9,800. Now, a is the lower level of water, and that's here at zero. We're pumping all of the water out, so we, our lowest slice is going to be here at the bottom. B is the upper level of water. The tank is all the way full, so that means B has to be 10, since the first bit of water that's coming out is the water at the very top. Now let's go ahead and figure out what A of Y is. And I'm going to use a different color for that, pink. 
And I'm going to go ahead and draw my representative cross section that is a slice of the water in the tank. And if I were to look at this in 2D, this makes a circle here. So I know we can't slice water, but it's just a, a way of describing this. This is a, as if we took a knife and cut out a little slice and it held together, it would make this circle here. Well, the y-axis one's right through the middle here. So right here we have our y-axis. So I know that this distance here is just r, so that's three meters. Well, what is the area of a circle with radius three? You're correct, it's pi r squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and put pi r squared and instead of r, of course, I'm gonna write three squared. That's the area of a slice of water. Now let's figure out the distance water travels and to do this, I need a little more space, so I'm going to move this to the side. I'm going to resize these constants and move them out of the way. And let's just think of a water that's here. So water located at y equals 0. So if it's located at y equals 0, this bit of water is going to have to travel how far up? Straight up. From here to here to the top where the outflow is. If you said 10 meters, you're correct. Now, what about water that's located a little further up vertically? Say I have water located one meter up. So it's already traveled one meter. Well, I mean, it hasn't traveled. It's located one meter above, so it doesn't have to travel this meter, but it does have to travel its location all the way up, and that's nine meters. What if the water slice is located two meters above the bottom of the tank? Well, again, it doesn't have to travel these two meters. It only has to travel up these remaining eight meters. Do you see a pattern there? The number 10 here is just equal to the height of the tank minus or less the location of the slice of water. In this case, it's zero. Similarly, 9 is equal to the height of the tank less the vertical location of the slice of water. The same thing here goes when the water is located 2 meters, as we saw here, above the bottom of the tank. We travel the distance of 8, which is the height of the tank minus the location of the water. And I just noticed, even though I said the height of the tank, I wrote a 9 there instead of 10. There we are. So there's our pattern. If the water is located as 0 meters above the bottom of the tank, it travels 10 minus 0. If the water is located 1 meter from the bottom of the tank, it travels 10 minus 1 meters, which is 9. If it's 2 meters from the bottom of the tank, it's going to travel a total of 8 meters, which is the height of the tank of 10 minus its location. So with that, rather than keep going, let's come up with a general case. If the water slice is located, that is the representative cross section is located y meters above the bottom of the tank, then the distance it travels will be 10 minus y. That's d of y. That's our distance. All right, let's bring all the constants out to the front. So first thing, 9,800 times 3 squared, which is 9. So 9,800 times 9. That gives me... 88,200, and of course, pi is just a constant. And all I'm really integrating is 10 minus y dy. All right, so this is 88,200 pi times 10y minus y squared over 2. And this is evaluated from 0 to 10. So this is 88,200 pi times 10 times 10 minus 10 squared over 2. So this is just 88,200 pi times 50. And 
and that is 4,410,000 pi. Now, what are our units? They're in joules. But those of you in um, courses that are not all about the math will not have your answer like this. You'll actually have to multiply this out. So let's go ahead and multiply this out and write it in scientific notation. So I'm going to multiply 4,410,000 by pi, and that gets me 13,854,423.6. Now, the number of decimal places I leave doesn't matter, because in order to use scientific notation, I need to move the decimal in this direction. And this becomes... One point four times ten to the seventh joules. So the work required to pump all of the water out of this full tank that's ten meters tall, which has a radius of three, which got cut off here, excuse me, when the outflow is located right at the top of the tank, well the amount of work is one point four times ten to the seven joules. I hope you found this video helpful. Well, now let's take a look at the second part. And in the second part, everything stays the same, except um, that the tank is now half full. So we're still pumping out all of the water. So everything has to go, we want it emptied. And the outflow is still at the top of the tank here. Again, now the only change is the tank is half full of water. Okay, so there is the tank full to half its height. So I know this distance here is five meters. So what changes? Let's figure this out. And remember, A of Y was the area of a representative slice of water. D of Y was the distance the water travels. Um, gravity and the density of water haven't changed, so let's just omit those. And then A and B, those are the water levels. So let's see, we've already said that, you know, the density of the liquid and gravity have not changed. So that's the same. We know the area hasn't changed, the area of a representative slice, because this is still in the shape, same shape it was. So a slice would still look the same, so that's the same. I know that water here, which is at five meters, is going to travel up an additional five meters. So 10 minus y still describes the distance it travels. The bottom of the water we're pumping out is still here at zero. Aha, I think I've pinpointed our one and only change. The top of the water level is now at five meters. So the upper limit of integration needs to change. Okay, let's go ahead and make that change. Okay, so I've made the appropriate change and the remainder of the integral is cha has changed color just to make it clear that the only change was the upper limit of integration. And so to clean this up a bit further, um, again, multiply 9,800 times nine, bring the pi out, and we're really just integrating 10 minus y again. So this is 88,200 pi times 10 y minus y squared over two. And we're evaluating from zero to five. All right, for the last part, the change that's been made is the outflow is now three meters above the top of the tank and that's sketched here. The tank is full and we want to pump out all the water. So let's chat about what changes and what does not change. Clearly these constants don't change. Again gravity and the density of the fluid will stay the same. The area of the slice won't change so we're still going to end up with um, pi times the radius which is three squared or just nine pi. Okay. Now, what about the water levels? The tank is full. The lower water level is here at y equals zero, so that's still our lower limit of integration. The upper water level is still located here at y equals 10. So b here is still equal to 10, so that's unchanged. So then let's examine the distance. So I made this similar table uh, as last time, and let's figure some things out. So let's suppose I have some water here, right at the bottom. So that's at y equals zero. 
Well, this water is going to have to travel the full 10 meters of the tank and then the additional 3 meters to get to the outflow. So this one's going to be 13 total traveled. So next, let's say I have a slice of water that's just, and I'll sketch the whole slice in for now. And this is located at y equals one meter above the bottom of the tank. Well, then this slice of water doesn't need to travel this single meter. It does need to travel these nine meters, but then it has to travel these additional three meters. So this one will have to travel 12 meters. Let's try one more. Okay, let's suppose this slice is located two meters above the bottom of the tank. So here I have my two meters. Here I have the distance it needs to travel to make it to the top, which is eight meters. Of course, these add to 10, and then we add an additional three meters to the eight meters to get 11. So this slice of water here is gonna travel eight meters to the top of the tank, and then an additional three meters to the top of the outflow. All right, so we can generalize this. A slice located at Y meters, and we might not know where that Y is, is going to travel the distance remaining of the tank plus three. So this is 10 plus three minus y, which is just 13 minus y. So here is the one and only change we need to make. All right, as you can see, I went ahead and made that one and only change that we needed. All right, so let's go ahead and just integrate again. Um, 9,800 times nine, it hasn't changed. That's still 88,200 pi here. And then we're just integrating 13 minus y, since this all came out to the front. So really this is just 13y minus y squared over two, evaluated from zero to 10. So in here, when we evaluate using 10, we end up with 88,200 pi times 130 minus 10 squared over two, that's 50. So this is just 88,200 times 80, and that's 7,056,000 times pi joules. Of course, we're not going to leave it like this. Let's go ahead and multiply it by pi. And that gives us 22,167,077.76 joules. And in scientific notation, it's in scientific notation. Oh, I'm missing a zero here. Look at this. Oh, there it is. Let me fix that. There we are. That's correct now. So in scientific notation, this is just 2.2 times 10 to the seventh joules. All right, to close, let's just make a quick comparison of all three different um, cases we did. We started with a full tank and pumped out all the water with a pump at the top of the tank. And you'll notice I only sketched the water here since this was a half full, and that was to really make it um, easy to see visually where the water is. So these ones were assuming they're all blue all the way through. And we found that the work was 1.4 times 10 to the seven joules. So half a tank of water, with the outflow at the same place, we expect the work to be less, and sure enough, it is less. Rather than having a um, 10 to the seventh power, we have a 10 to the sixth power, so it's definitely less. And then finally, when we move the outflow pipe, but we left the tank full, we expect to require more work since we're doing all the work we did here to get the water out vertically, plus an extra distance, this extra three meters. And so of course you look and this one is definitely larger. So as you're working on your own, make sure you ans ask yourself these questions. Does my answer make sense? And consider the different scenarios that you have uh, solved when you're working alone. I hope you found this video helpful.